Hi, my name is Keith Carson. I'm on the Board of Supervisors, Alameda County. Uh, I represent District 5, which includes the cities of Albany, Berkeley, Piedmont, Emeryville, and a third of Oakland. On a regular basis, I try to bring you information to the podcast that uh, could be of benefit to you around government and its impact on your lives. But I'll deviate today to bring a little bit of local history, which I think is very important uh, as well. California's labor movement has been chronicled in a piece called Golden Lands Working Hands by Fred Glass. We know that the labor movement has been a continuous growing and struggling movement here in this country since the early 1900s. And in California, especially in the 1930s, uh, there were a number of strikes and actions that took place all across the state of California as the labor movement uh, began to grow and become a part of what it is today. Here in our own backyard, Oakland, California, there was the Oakland General Strike, which took place in 1946, December 3rd. It was a Monday, and all of commerce came to a stop. On some level, that really brought full circle the labor movement in this entire country in terms of the struggles that working class men and women took every single day in order to get their fair and equitable share. I hope that you will take a moment and watch this short video and it will give some insight into the life of working class people that played a significant role in the labor movement across this country. Although California unions emerged from the war years bigger than they had ever been, their size hides a potential weakness. Many newcomers don't know how their brothers and sisters won their rights and paychecks through the hard battles of the pre-war years. But most labor leaders have added responsibilities and worries. Teaching new workers about unionism takes time that's hard to find. This soon becomes a problem. With the wartime emergency over, many employers want to bring back the good old days of the anti-union open shop. It was after the war, and uh, I think we needed to get our share. The industry had sure made theirs during the war, and we were all uh, You had uh, wage and price controls, so uh, most of us we were locked into uh, into wages. Wages have to be frozen, Joe. The workers are making too much money for their own good, and prices haven't risen very much. In response to the boss's anti-labor offensive, working people launched the greatest wave of strikes in the United States history. Across the country, millions of workers walk picket lines shutting down entire industries. Many are World War II veterans, disturbed at their poor treatment after fighting for their country. In Hollywood, Thousands of craft workers organized in the left-wing conference of studio unions, led by set painter Herb Sorrell, battled the studio bosses, the police, and another union. Roy Brewer, a leader of the International Association of Theatrical and Stage Employees, brings strike breakers across the picket lines. He hopes his members will keep these jobs. Brewer claims his opponent Sorrell is a communist and skillfully develops this idea into a publicity strategy for the studios. In an atmosphere of growing anti-communist hysteria, Brewer's tactic works well. The conference of studio unions is soon broken up. Many of its members lose their jobs or have to switch unions to keep working. Along with prominent actors, writers, and directors, Sorrell is investigated and blacklisted. He never works in Hollywood again. Despite his troubles, Sorrell takes the time to send a message of support northward to AFL brothers and sisters involved in another struggle. In Oakland, California, a general strike tied up the entire area. Bus and train service ceased to exist in a dispute characterized by Dave Beck, Teamster leader in the far west area, as a lot of foolishness and more like a revolution than an industrial dispute. 
Meanwhile, the lives of nearly three quarters of a million people had been affected. Hold on. Did you understand what you just saw? I didn't. The perspective of the newsreel seems to be that these Oakland workers were doing something senseless. Using the same film footage, perhaps we could imagine another perspective. Something like this. Owners of Kahn's and Hastings department stores refused to recognize a union favored by their employees. Hundreds of clerks went out on strike. Police beat up picketers and helped the Retail Merchants Association bring goods across picket lines. Outraged Oakland unionists called a general strike. For two days, Oakland stood still until owners and the city agreed to negotiate with workers' representatives. Okay, we've heard two different sets of facts. The newsreel selected some, we selected others. But each version of the story is missing something. Perhaps the striking workers themselves should be heard from. I was working in the shoe department, and I was making, uh, I believe, uh, $28 a week at that time, and, uh, you know, just getting out of the service. The only problem was that when I found, after talking to other people in, in specialty stores, just, such as Peter Brothers and, and Cushions, uh, they were making $10 or better a week, better than I was. And I went to the union and uh, asked why they didn't organize the store. These people came on back, and I mean, you know, my uh, brother Americans uh, and, and also the gals that came back from the war, and, and when they held out their hand for just a little piece of pie, the answer was no. One employer whose voice says no the loudest is Joseph Noland, publisher of the Oakland Tribune and longtime spokesman for conservative business interests. His newspaper labels moderate unionists extreme elements and warns of an impending communist takeover of Oakland. Nolan dominated the uh, politics in Oakland, and he had the, the Tribune, which was his voice. And uh, everyone felt that all the decisions for the city were made at the Tribune Tower, not at City Hall. Very, very conservative. Mm -hmm. Very anti-union. His paper was something that we got every day to read and then got mad about. <laughs> Along with Noland, another major anti-union force in Oakland is the Retail Merchants Association. It demands that the Retail Clerks Union organize all 28 stores in the association before it will recognize the union at Cannes and Hastings. What precipitated the strike was the firing of one of the people who had joined the union. One of the ladies um, who had joined and signed up with the union was fired. Originally, we had somewhere in the area of between 70 and 80 percent of the workers came out. And I would say the same thing applied at Hastings. The women were fantastic as far as uh, holding up and in their sense of humor and, and, uh, and being on the picket line, I'd set the schedules up and they'd be there, rain or shine. Well, it was like any picket line. Everybody walked up and down, carried signs and, and yelled, don't be a scab. <laughs> it was pretty effective. They were keeping most of the people out. People would come, see what was going on, and then turn away. But some went through. And tempers would flare. Uh, but I think that the, the tempers that flared were not the pickets, but the people going through the line knowing in their own heart, very probably, that they were doing the wrong thing. Despite a mostly peaceful picket line, feelings sometimes run high. Picket Captain Gwendolyn Byfield calls a strikebreaker scab and rat. She is arrested, but charges are dropped. After weeks go by without a settlement, the Retail Merchants Association and their friends in the Nolan political machine decide to take a different approach. I went back over to take a line. The time I got back over there, why the, the uh, cops were are pushing our people off the street and uh, towing the automobiles away. They beat us all out of the alleys, uh, pushed us with those damn billy clubs. I was black and blue here for months. The trucks followed right behind them, went on in and unloaded. Then they went back to get more. It wasn't bringing in strike breakers necessarily that started the general strike. You know, I thought about that a lot since that. We'd seen strike breakers. But the thing was, using the police force that we were paying taxes for to beat us off our own streets. 